Welcome back guys to another episode in my Sprinter van build. Um, lockdown's been lifted. Unfortunately, I didn't make an intro to this video, so my beard um, is just about to grow quite significantly. So yeah, a bit of continuity error, but anyway, here we go. Um, so if you've been following my build, I have ditched my um, Mercedes seats that were in the back row. They were uh, like a factory seat out of a Mercedes Vito. I have gone for um, an alternative. Um, I love them. They were a little bit lower than I would have probably liked them to be. They looked absolutely amazing. They come with Isofix already built in. Um, I had them upholstered to match. Um, they, they looked great. Um, they're very, very heavy. Um, and if you follow my build, you'll know that's been an issue for me. Um, the twin was 60 kilos and the single was an additional 30 kilos and I didn't need free seats. I'm hoping to create something along the lines of this. Hopefully I'm good enough to make that work. So as you can see from the pictures, the end product looks really, really professional. I can't wait. It's going to look absolutely lovely. Going to get the upholstery to match just like I did before. But on top of that, this seat setup actually gives our Truma Combi 4E boiler a home. It's specifically designed to house a Truma Combi boiler, which is absolutely amazing. My previous seats were kind of just dead space. I mean, we put a tabletop behind it and maybe our a coat thrown underneath it. This is taking my boiler out of my garage area and putting it somewhere where I can pretty much totally forget about it. So. Here it is. So this is what you get guys, three major parts. You get this big backrest section here. It already has the seat belts fitted so there's no getting your head around how they work. All fully fitted. You get this main structure here. This arch allows for the combi. This tongue, you literally push into a section here. And then by the time you've twisted that up, these two become absolutely solid. They don't actually, apart from this main bar going through, there's no fixing between those two, but believe me, I'll put it together. It works absolutely great. So you get the backrest, this structure here, this has the tails for the seat belt, and then you get a fitting pack. This goes underneath, I'll show you that, but that goes underneath and presses up against your chassis um, rail. And then you've got these bolts that go down through. It is so simple and I've knocked this together already. I've mocked it up and it takes probably half an hour. It is crazy good. This is something you can definitely do on your own. So while it is quite an awkward shape, the whole lot only weighs 18 kilos. So like I said, it's a bit of a funny shape when you've got it up, but it's easily manageable on your own. So I'll put it together and I'll show you. That, believe it or not, is how you assemble it. Um, yes, there's a couple of nuts to go on there. Um, don't, you don't need to sit here and watch me tighten those up. But that is it. And once they are tightened up, this is absolutely solid. So mine was a retrofit, so I actually had to cut a section of floor in my van to allow for this, um, because this is my second time round. But if you were doing this from day one, you would have this whole lot installed within an hour is absolutely great. I'll show you where it goes. Here's the frame and it's final rest in place. Like I say, I've actually had to cut a section of the floor out to allow for it or leave it, leave it unfitted, should I say. Um, yeah, so the back bolts are the main structure. So these big old babies go down through. And what they do is they grab hold of this little fella and they actually pull up 
against one of the longitudinal chassis rails in a sprinter van you can actually see the divot of it up top so you know where to start from now you only have to put the put the seat frame in and it can only really sit in one place and it will kind of show you this big divot here now that is the chassis rail running front to back so the idea of the the support and the structure is that you brace either side of it i will show you bottom side but you brace either side of it and you clamp the frame to that chassis rail so it's going nowhere now this piece of structural loveliness goes on the back but it only actually supplies a couple of wood screws for the front so I'm in no way sponsored or have any kind of inside information. I get what the instructions come with and it just comes with a couple of wood screws. So I did question whether or not I was supposed to sit on top of my floor, but that to me means it's only really as good as the floor structure, which is batten and ply. So I didn't want to do that. What I have done is use these big four holes here and I've gone down through with them and front to back, I've got these metal plates that I've made. Um, you could probably use just big washers. I may be over-engineering the whole thing. And in fact, once this back thing's fit, once this back section's fitted, it might be just strong enough. That might be all it needs. And this is kind of irrelevant. But for me, for what it takes to do it, I'm putting these bars on the underside, bolt them together from the underside, and that is going to be absolutely bulletproof. So this is what you end up with on the underside. So the bolts come down through um, and the nuts pull this section back up, clamping it between the chassis rail. I lock these off. Um, once I knew how long they needed to be um, because they they were quite long initially um, and because they're nylock to stop them coming undone themselves uh, they are quite tough to put on uh, obviously naturally that's the that's the nature of it so I lock them off uh, you're gonna need a 22 mil um, socket long reach preferably so that's one thing that your toolbox might need uh, apart from that you just um i use a set of grips to grab to grab this otherwise it would just spin and spin and spin so i held against myself with a pair of grips because none of this gets a thread um and tightened it up on the front section like i said i've used a big piece of metal metal bar to brace from chassis rail to chassis rail that's way over engineered as opposed to what they wanted and what i think where they would like you to fit this if you were starting from scratch is actually um a crossways through this rail meeting this rail but i couldn't because my build is already under progression so i think this is naturally where they would want you to put it putting it where i've put it a little bit further back I just about miss all of my water tanks. If you do put it down through that where A meets B, you may get interference with a water tank if you've got one like this that sits under your driver's, um, driver's side. So we are fully bolted in. We're fully bolted in and it is solid. I can tell you now, it doesn't move at all, doesn't flex, doesn't stretch, nothing. And I know, um, once I've got my Isofix fitted on there, my baby is going to be safe. And if that doesn't keep him safe, if anything should happen to that, we're already dead anyway. Because for that to fail, we would be in massive, massive problems. Because that is just solid as a rock. I patched the floor back in. I've just sat it in there at the moment. I'll seal this in. Um, not that it needs it, not that you're ever gonna see it. I'm gonna have a big boiler here. It's gonna be in a box. Um, only gonna see it for maintenance. And if there's ever a problem, 
none of this is um, needs to be aesthetically pleasing, although it just kind of, um, you can see the reflect it's coming there from underneath, but it just kind of makes you feel better when it's, when it's all um, lovely, when you open doors and things like that. But there it is. Um, I just drilled some more holes that's going to allow me to bring pipes and wires through for my new boiler. The boiler is in. Ignore this wire. I'm not being messy. That's just my um, temperature stat that hasn't got home yet. But the boiler's in. I've just got these two here um, that will heat the front of the van. They can't be fitted yet because uh, I'm, I've got a box coming in here. The box is supplied by Evo Motion. Once again, I am not sponsored, affiliated or asked to do these videos. It's just where I've been getting my stuff from. They've been super helpful and the gear they get is absolutely wonderful. So this box, I am buying it. It would cost me money to buy the materials alone. So why not get them to save me all the time and knock a box up together on the CNC machine. It just makes perfect sense. So that'd be part two, but my boiler lives here. What I can't show you, unfortunately, anymore, I've got it set up on these 40 mil box section, aluminium, um, because of the arch in the, in the seat frame. But what I've just covered up by putting that in is it literally follows the shape of the seat frame exactly. So when I looked through, I had almost like a 10 mil clearance between that and the boiler the whole time, which was good. I didn't want to screw something down and it like apply a piece of pressure on the, the cylinder or stretch or bend or anything like that. It's, it's a total clearance. That boiler doesn't even know that, that seat frame is there. It's well within the um, manufacturer's instructions to have it on a false floor. I have checked, so there's no, it should be fitted to the floor, nothing like that. If anything, there's a bit of airflow around it. As long as you've got your dropout vents. Absolutely, this has been seamless. It's been absolutely easy. And once again, I'm going to say it again. I wish I did this from the start. But hey ho, we're here. It's getting right. I love it. I can't wait to show you part two.